I now have the great pleasure of being joined by Dr. Saleh Ahmed, Assistant Professor of Interdisciplinary Programs at Boise State University School of Public Service. You work at the intersection of policy and science. At times, it seems difficult to link science effectively to policy change or policy influence. So how do you encourage scientists to think about their science with regards to impacts and potential solutions? Thank you, thank you. This is really important questions, particularly this time. What I see, there is actually particularly no major uh, conflicts between science and policy, but there is actually some gaps because of the lack of awareness, like what could be the impacts for not following the science, particularly just think about like what is right now happening during the COVID-19 pandemic. And also sometimes we often actually think like from scientist point of view to produce that useful science. Of course, the science should be useful, but also it is equally important like whether we are producing usable science like that can be used by the people uh, in the society or in the policy making, whether they can actually use our science for, uh, for the betterment of the society. So usability of science is also critical. Tell us about your recent work studying farming decisions in Bangladesh. First of all, I'm originally from coastal Bangladesh. So for me, it was not a surprise like growing in that part of the world, which is one of the most climate vulnerable areas in the world. Uh, growing up in that region, I experienced floods, tropical cyclones, unpredictable rainfall pattern. Particularly in 2017, when I was actually doing some field work uh, around uh, October, November, December, that period in, in that area, what I found, like because of the untimed uh, rainfall, farmers in that part of the world, they lost 50% of their crops. You know, like when they lost 50% of their crops, it's not just uh, impact their food security, it's, it impacts their family well-being, income opportunities, even their children's uh, school enrollment. So it has tremendous impacts beyond the food security of those people. So that's what I'm actually trying to understand last couple of years, like how climate vulnerability, climate variability, uh, and our adaptation efforts and resiliency efforts can impact people who are at the margins in different parts of the global south. How do you fold UN sustainability goals into your work and why have you chosen to focus in this way? One of the reasons is I used to work for United Nations before, so I used to work for them. And what I found like uh, when I was there, like particularly during the previous version of UN's uh, sustainable development goal, which was UN Millennium Development Goals. These are a very important and good indicators that can help the country and society to achieve certain goals on food security, health, uh, environment, and many other things. And particularly now, uh, with the revised and renewed version of, uh, of UN MDGs, which is now UN SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, countries around the world, including United uh, States, uh, all countries should work together and achieve some goals so that people do not face hunger, uh, we can produce enough crops, we can deal with climate change, we can have clean water, clean air and ocean. And of course, like at the time of like when we have tremendous amount of conflict, issues of peace and sustainability, I think this could be a very important framework that we should actually go forward. Thank you.